Hi everyone, Teddy Baldassar with teddybaldassar.com. In this video, we're looking at a watch from Tissot, one of their cool retro chronographs with the 1973. So in this video and on this channel, we cover watches available for purchase on our website, teddybaldassar.com as a full authorized dealer. So in this video, we'll do an overview of this timepiece, kind of look at the things to consider. Also throughout this video, if you have any further questions, check out the link in the description to the product page. Also, you can go ahead and purchase the watch and set up a time with one of our dedicated watch specialists as well. But guys, let's jump into the video, take a closer look at this watch. The crossover between motorsports and watchmaking has a long and storied relationship, with some of the biggest names in racing history associated with watch brands, either through an official sponsorship or having a relationship with a particular model. For example, such as brands like Tag Heuer, Richard Mill, IWC, are all currently involved with team sponsorships in the F1 circuit, and Rolex is an official timekeeper for all of Formula One. Back in 1976, Tissot sponsored Formula One driver Loris Kessel, who became an influential car dealer and eventually sponsored race teams through his network of car dealerships. Today, Mr. Kessel and his son operate Kessel Classic, which commissions classic race cars to participate in historical races all over the world. To pay tribute to this relationship, Tissot released the Heritage 1973, a larger modern take on a vintage racing chronograph in three different dial configurations. So taking a look at the Tissot Heritage 1973 on the wrist, we have a set of case dimensions that are a bit unorthodox, 43.6 millimeters across, and from the lug to lug distance, 48.4 millimeters with a thickness of 15 millimeters with some good height being attributed to that dome sapphire crystal. Now the vintage to nose shape occupies a good amount of real estate which creates a substantial wrist presence that is also a bit different than you probably expect from typical oversized sports watches. Wrist sizes smaller than 18 centimeters will likely have a bit more difficulty getting the most out of wearability of this model even with these shortened lugs and a sub 50 millimeter lug to lug size. The case size features sculpted lines and bevels with a mix of high polish and finely brushed surfaces. Brush finishes are found on the top surface of the case with a radial pattern and along the sides of the case with a horizontal orientation. Breaking up these two brush finishes is the large polished chamfer edge that runs from the lug to lug on either side of the case with hard lines distinguishing each area. On the right side of the case, we have a push-pull crown embossed with the Tissot T, as well as two unsigned pump pushers for engaging the chronograph function. The crown is large and easy to manipulate, while also aiding with the Heritage 1973 water resistance rating of 100 meters. To hand wind the watch, keep the crown in the first position and turn the crown clockwise, and then extend it to the only other option available at that next position, and that will also allow you to adjust the time while hacking the second hand as well, so stopping the second hand in the process here. Powering the Heritage 1973 is the ETA 7753, which is a mechanically similar variant to the ETA or Valju 7750, but one major difference is the setting of the date. Here, setting the date is done one of two ways. There is a pusher adjuster on the left side of the case aligned with the 10 o'clock hash, where the date can be advanced with the aid of a stylus tool. But if you prefer not to use that, the crown also allows you to advance the day by moving the hour past midnight or reversing the hands backward four hours to eight o'clock and then advancing again past midnight. While this isn't the most user-friendly way to change the date, it does work well when you don't have access to a stylus. And just to keep in mind, the 7753 is just a different layout of the register. So this is done with some styling in mind in order to be able to achieve this look. Activating the chronograph is straightforward. Press the top pusher to start and stop it while the bottom button resets the hands back to zero. Attached between the 22 millimeter lugs is a padded brown leather racing strap, which is based on a 1960s design that Tissot actually patented with its large perforated holes. The strap is finished off with a 20 millimeter brush butterfly clasp fitted with a two button release system. And this butterfly clasp is actually quite good. And I would certainly recommend utilizing it if you did decide to part from this strap in the future. Very good, signed, and also lightweight, but still very secure. Moving back over to the top of the case, we find the large dome sapphire crystal with anti-reflective coating, providing an unobstructed view of the matte dial underneath. So just as an important note to keep in mind, these watches do come in several different dial colors, offering distinct looks and takes on this retro styling. As we move from the outside of the dial inward, we first find a step tachymeter ring, which is used to measure speed printed in thin white print. Inside of that, we find the primary dial surface where more dense tracking can be found along the immediate edge, 
where the tachymeter ring and dial meet. The hours are marked off by greenish yellow luminous hashes all the way around the dial outskirts. The Tissot logo is situated underneath the double hash marks at the 12 o'clock position in white contrasting print, and the dial layout is largely defined by the ETA 7753 inside, which positions the date window at the four o'clock inside a white border, displaying the white date wheel below. Another distinguishing layout features this particular movement is the orientation and positioning of the sub-registers, which are located at the 3, 6, and 9 o'clock for a classic look. This contrasts from the Valju 7750, which is going to have a vertical display layout. Sub-registers are positioned with some nice space in between them, featuring contrasting print, some nice pop of color where necessary with some of the registers, as well as having some fine grain concentric circle finish within. At the nine o'clock position, you have your running 60 seconds. At the six, the 12 hour sub-register, and then at the three o'clock, your 30 minute timer. In the center of the dial, there is a set of two-tone black and white baton hour and minute hands, which are fitted with luminous material. Finishing off the handset is a long black orange center seconds hand for the chronograph. This is really, I would say, the number one kind of cherry on top in terms of this design and tying it all together, as that orange tip is incredibly visible. In terms of low light visibility, it's adequate, with the hands in particular glowing bright and consistent. If there are any visibility issues on this particular variant, it would have to be fair to say, as the hands cross over some of the subdials, they can get a bit momentarily lost, particularly the hour hand. That said, there is a real sense of harmony among the dial elements and colors, something that's a bit tricky to pull off with some more daring color in this format, but Tissot did a very good job of being able to utilize this successfully. Flipping the watch over to view the exhibition case back, which provides visual access to the automatic ETA 7753, which we've alluded to quite a bit already. Looking at the just simple finish of this movement, we are greeted with vertical brush skeletonized rotor, donning the Tissot name along the bottom in white print. The bridges and plates feature some nice high level finishing with some prolaging along most of the visible areas, but also nicely polished surfaces to the visible springs and chronograph components. This ETA 7753 variant will provide up to 60 hours of power reserve while operating at four Hertz or 28,800 vibrations per hour. Again, this movement is similar to its more famous cousin, the ETA 7750 in terms of architecture, but features a signature 369 layout of those registers rather than the 6912 layout, as well as a four o'clock date location that will also not have the adjustment via the crown. Overall, the ETA 7753 is a formidable movement that is used by many brands on the market. These movements are thick, which are going to make this watch be a little bit thicker in scale. So just kind of keep that in mind. You're dealing with an eight millimeter thick movement alone, but in terms of reliability and getting into the entry level of Swiss mechanical chronographs, these two options from Valju are going to be the leaders if we're talking about a fully integrated chronograph movement. All right, so now to unpack looking at this Tissot Heritage 1973. In terms of the design of this piece, it is going to be a specific type of individual that's going to align with this, but heritage chronographs in terms of doing it well, I think this is certainly gonna be one that can join that group. In regards to the sizing, that is going to be the number one limitation of this piece, along with the pricing of this one being higher end for a Tissot. This one is actually retailing above $2,000. So that is just something to keep in mind. When you're looking across the aisle at another Swatch Group brand, you're talking about the same movement, also very similar pricing and positioning with the Intramatic Chronograph from Hamilton. This is going to line up pretty well with that, but the elements of wearability are, I think, the number one challenge that this watch is facing. The design stands on its own. I think it's a very well executed 1970s looking chronograph with a variety of different dial colors to choose from. The case style in terms of the finishing is going to be very good, if not a little bit unorthodox compared to what we're used to in a modern context. But simply put, this is a watch probably best suited for larger wrists that want this retro styling and can overlook some of the larger wearing dimensions and just see this watch for what it is in terms of a design perspective, which is a very well executed piece. All right, guys, well, thank you again so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. Really would appreciate that, and that does help out the channel as well. And if you are in the market for this watch, it is available on teddybaldister.com. We are a full authorized dealer of all the brands that we carry quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, 
Also, all of our products come with a full factory warranty. So if something goes wrong, you're covered. In addition to that, we also offer price match. So if you see one of our watches for cheaper at another authorized dealer, fill out the form, we'll get in contact with you. And then finally, nine out of every $10 that we generate from our store goes right back into the content that we're creating, trying to foster up a new generation of watch enthusiasts in the process. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.